All right. Um, I was wondering if you'll be uh, proud of me. I got your exams. Um, you guys did all right. I was surprised that so many of you got tripped with, uh, with the second problem. I know you could have solved it with uh, the kinematic equations. So, well, and conservation of energy. So the first mechanics. Which means that uh, you're not really thinking about it in physical terms. Um, what else? This is lecture number 14, part of 28. So we're in the middle of the semester. Um, next Tuesday, you guys are going to design the uh, second exam. <coughs> Excuse me. And the second exam is going to cover <coughs> chapters three and four. Um, I added the participation column, I guess you see it as an item, um, to Blackboard. It's worth, I think, up to 12 points. And you don't need to participate at all. You don't need any participation points to get an A in the class. But it helps. There is no curve in the class. So you know, it's, uh, I think it's better to do, uh, check that box. And um, I'm going to send an email with all this information. But since you are so bad at collaboration, um, I'm going to give you guys one point for each homework that you collaborate with someone on. So you'll put the name of the person, and that's it. If the, if the names match, you get one point. So the maximum is 12. Um, this is a graduate level class. Everybody should get an A. Everybody should work hard. And I can see that you work hard. You know, so I'm not worried about that part. Um, okay. I don't know if, I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. So, this is chapter number four. I like it. You know, um, I guess I haven't used Goldstein before. I like how uh, this in chapter four, they go from something very uh, concrete, you know, a rotation with, um, with all the angles, um, all the, the cosine distances. And uh, from that, they go to the uh, orthogonality relations. And uh, from that, they went to expressing all the information in a more abstract way in, um, with Einstein notation. And then they go into, um, I guess, a little bit of uh, linear algebra. So we looked at the first uh, property, I guess, of transformation matrices. Uh, last time, it was that if you apply two successive transformations, linear transformations, then that's equivalent to just another linear transformation, a, a third one. So we wrote that in uh, Einstein notation. Let me see. Um, is there anything? Yeah. So. So this relationship is important. So it's A, I, J, A, I, K. And you know, over here, 
the indices really matter, the order and everything. But this is just the Kronecker delta for j and k. Um, in this case, j equals 1, 2, 3. And i and j are indices. So uh, this will be x, y, and, and z. And this is the uh, orthogonality um, relationship or rule or equation or condition is just call it orthogonality. Uh, the other thing is that uh, when we apply a, a transformation matrix, we can we, we have two um, interpretations. So the first one is same vector. You apply a transformation to that vector, health. And um, you change how you represent the components of that vector, but it is the same vector. So over here, you are rotating the rotating uh, the actual Cartesian system. And the other interpretation, that the math is the same, is that you apply the transformation to a vector, and you obtain um, another vector in the same system. So this would be in the prime system, uh, on prime system, that it's rotated by, you know, whatever you put in there. So that's important to remember. So now we're going to see some of the consequences um, of this stuff when we go to the level of um, linear algebra, so matrices. We saw that. Wait, uh, when you apply two transformations in a row, you get a third one. So that would be A, B, um, A tilde, B tilde, and as I mentioned last time, I'm going to use uh, tilde for, um, for matrices or operators. I thought about it a little bit more and I guess I could use something like this, you know, for matrices, but I don't like it. I guess I'm used to this. So, you know, just in the case of a, uh, um, how do you call this one? The, um, ah, you switch the rows and columns. How do you call it? Yeah, the transpose, yes. Just in the case of the transpose, is different from, uh, I guess it's in conflict with the book. But, uh, just keep that one case in mind. So we have um, this relationship. Um, notice, though, this is important. that matrix multiplication doesn't commute in general. Well, I guess it doesn't. You can find some specific cases. So A, B is different than B, A. Um, does not commute 
uh, but it does have uh, associativity. So A B C is equal to um, A B C. Oh, my handwriting is off today. Okay. And does commute. I mean, um, um, associative property. All right. So we're going to consider um, some to have more space over here so I don't want to get rid of that um, so there is an operation that changes So we apply this transformation to R and it becomes R prime. There is a, another transformation that makes this one equal to R. So I guess it would be B R prime equals R. Um, weekly. So what do you uh, expect this operation to look like? The inverse of the hmm? like the inverse. Say that again? Like the inverse of the inverse? How would that look like for a matrix? In component form. In component form? The components? So we will have some relationship between the components of uh, wiggly A and wiggly B, right? Good. So, um, indeed, is the inverse, and we're gonna say, we're gonna denote it as wiggly I to the negative one, so the inverse, just like you would do with a fraction or something. So, Instead of having this relationship, a i j x j. Uh, so this is another one that I wanted to put over here, but I guess it's here now. Um, we saw it before, last time. So, oh wait, there's a i. So there should be another relationship that is just I, and then this one's gonna be, well, I guess both of them. Prime and prime. So in order to avoid getting confused with the indices, so this one we're gonna rewrite it as xk prime uh, akj xj. 
Wait, uh, I'm gonna change this one to eyes. Because I want this relationship. Okay. Okay. So, that means that I can rewrite this one, well, I guess this one, as xk prime equals a k i. And then this one is this one over here. It's going to be a i j prime xj prime. And this one is equation uh, 4.29. So, you know, it's really a lot of uh, Einstein notation that is difficult to, at least for me, to understand. So, let's see if we can express this as a matrix, which, you know, until I start doing general relativity, this is more transparent to me. Where's Pedro? He should teach us general relativity. Okay, so we have this guy over here and this guy over here. So we can um, express this as matrices. So So this is going to be A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, and there's another one. Another one is going to be the same. One, one, but it's the prime one. So I don't have much space here, but I'll make it work. So in this one, oops. the rows are the case. This is k equals one, k equals two k equals 3. The columns are the i's. i1, i2, and i3. Here, the columns are which one? J? Uh, so here we have the rows are k, the k's. The columns are the i's. So in this other matrix, the prime one, the columns are what? J. So this is uh, j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3, 
columns. And the rows are going to be, so we can't get rid of this one. The ice. One, two, and three rows. So the columns in in A K I become a rose in A I J prime. Okay, so this is a product multiplication when you have it like this. So uh, we all remember how to do matrix multiplication. So it's like we're having a vector over here, the uh, xk or xj, whatever it is, is going to have um, x1, x2, and x3. In this case, because we have x, y, and z, and well, this one's going to be prime. But you could also have, you know, xj not prime, and it was just going to be x1, x2, and x3. So that is how uh, x looks like. It's a vector. So um, if j equals k, so the outside ones, then xj prime equals xk prime. Will you agree with that? Well, if j is equal to k, then this one, you okay, can just put the k over here. Right, so we have xk prime and xk prime. So that has to be the case. So that gives us some information about, about the multiplication. So if we follow it, it's going to be a11, a11 prime plus a12, a21 prime plus a13, a31 prime. It's equal to what? One. One. It's have, it has to be. And then we have uh, the other relationships. Uh, so will be a21, a12 prime. This one and this one. Right? Plus a22, a22 prime plus a23, a32 prime. That one also has to be equal to one. And so the the j is equal to k, right? So you're. Uh, this one is one prime. Right. You wrote x one, a one two prime. Uh, I cannot understand you. Can you? Show me? <laughs> it's one, it's a one two prime. Should it be x one, x one prime? Uh, probably. Okay. The first step. So it's this one and this one. This one, this one, this one, and this one. One prime. I think you got it right, no? Two, 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 three, three, two prime. I think I got it right. 
Um, and the last one is 3 1 1 3 prime. Yeah, I already did this to save some time here. But you know, these are the three that must be equal to one because well, xk has to be equal to xk. So how do we express that in Einstein notation? It's gonna look like a ki a prime i k. Um, so if you look at only one, it's gonna look like this. Okay, prime. K two two K prime. K three. 3k prime equal to 1. So we have uh, several other equations um, for the case in which j is different from k. I'm not going to write them down, not all of them, but how do they look like? I guess the first thing is that um, matrix product, what should it be? If j, j is different than k. So in this case, it had to be equal to 1 if j is equal to k. If j is different than k, what should it be? Yes, you have it. Zero, of course. Right? Um, I mean, we might find a case in which the uh, x's are different for you know some reason that you specify. But in general, you want this to be equal to 0 to ensure that. So you have three of these, the uh, diagonal elements. The case in which j is different than k, that's the off-diagonal elements. So you're going to have six of those equations, right? And if you care about them, you can look at my notes. But um, I'm just going to write one case. over here right so I guess that is uh, this multiplication right this one this one this one this one, this one, this one. It has to be equal to zero to ensure that relationship so any easy way of representing this when they're equal when j and k are equal the the uh, the sum I guess in Einstein notation is equal to 1 and when they're different it's equal to 0 how do we express that Kronecker delta so this whole thing, you know, what we can we can represent it as uh, a k i a i j prime. Mm, yes, yeah, so in general, this one, these two are will be different. So that's equal to delta Kronecker delta k j. So if k is equal to j, this thing is equal to 1. If k is different from j, 
that thing is equal to zero. Okay, so um, it looks kind of like this one, right? But notice that it's not the same. So this one is equation uh, 4.30. This one, if I remember correctly, is uh, 4.15. Let me confirm that. Four point fifteen. So from this one, from equation four point thirty, we're going to derive something a little bit more general. So uh, we know this, and we derive this, and we know where it came from, so I can get rid of this. So, just like you know, in algebra, we can have one over x, and we call that uh, the inverse. If we multiply this times x, I guess in this case, um, multiplication commutes. So, um, it's okay to do that. So, this is equal to what? One. So what is the, uh, the analogous of that in matrix algebra? The, the identity. I think so it would be, or well, it depends on how many rows and, uh, and columns you have. But if you have three, well, it just looks like this. If you have two, then it will look like this one, the smaller one. So it is the same concept. Um, the concept is that you can multiply a matrix times its inverse, and you will get the identity. So, um, this one is uh, if k i a i j prime equals the Kronecker delta um, then a i j prime is the inverse of a k i. It looks like, uh, is it easy to believe or no? Well, yes or no? Yes. Why? Because the derivation is full. So you have a matrix here, another matrix here, and the result is the identity, right? So then that means that one is the inverse of the other. So we can write it as a 
yeah, in matrix notation, so it would be A weekly, A weekly inverse equals to the identity. This one is equation. My question is that in the in the previous equation it was a summation. Uh huh. Yeah, but here it's not a summation. In this standard case, it's not a summation. Um, it is a summation, but when you do the summation over everything, because you have like everything repeated, you get the matrices. Yeah, it's like. It's not an easy notation, I guess, at least to get used to it. That's why I wanted to show that it was you're just the same as the, as the matrices. OK, so in this particular case, the multiplication, this one, commutes. And it is called the identity transformation. You know, this is kind of cool because um, we just, well, I guess we didn't demonstrate, but we showed that the identity matrix exists and if you multiply um, a vector times the identity matrix you get that same vector back right so it's kind of cool um, I mentioned maybe two weeks or so, two weeks ago or so, that um, in order to have um, space, you need a number one. Number one is uh, the identity, right? So you multiply something times one and you get it back. And you also need a zero. So yeah, that one is. I guess we don't really need to do much about it. There is a matrix B such that A plus B equals A. Um, what are the elements of B? Just zero, right? It's the zero, ma the zero matrix. So X equals X plus zero matrix. So we have the one, we have the zero, we have the uh, orthogonality relationships. So we're getting there. OK, so now we're going to consider, OK, so I think this is um, difficult to dispute, so I'll get rid of it. I'm gonna move it over here. So we're going to consider a double sum. It's going to look like this. 
A K L A K I and uh, hope the difference between the L and the I is clear. Um, I'll try to make it clear. Um, so this will be the multiplication of three matrices. And we know that matrix multiplication is uh, associative, so we can take this one and then multiply times this one. Or you know, we can take this one and then multiply times this one. So I guess it's up to us, but the result is the same. So if we take C equals Li as A KL A KI, so the first one, then this one is C Li A I J prime. Uh, if we do it the other way, if we let D K J B A K I A I J prime, then we can write this as A wait uh, yeah A K L D K J. If we use equation uh, four point fifteen, the uh, orthogonality relationship. Mm, then. This one will be um, KL. <laughs> help. Yeah, so the eyes over there are the case uh, over here. So that will be can rewrite it using that, re that relationship as um, yeah, so I'm going to write the whole thing. Yes. It's going to be the conquer delta. Um, but I don't want to get confused, so let me see. So C L I what was that? Yeah, so that is exactly equal to the Kronecker delta. J-I, here, uh, it was going to be L, okay, good. So, this one is Delta L I 
A I J prime. Okay. So that one is going to be not zero when. Not zero when right L equals I. So this is equal to A L J prime. Okay. That took a lot of effort. Okay, so this is the second one. Um, we're gonna use 4.30. So this one is gonna be A L, uh, Kronecker delta, K, J. Uh, this relationship is this one over here. And so that one is not zero. when k equals j. So this one is gonna be equal to a k j, when, uh, j l. And there's no primes or anything. Okay. So we know that these are uh, associative, so these two are equal, so these two are equal. So A, L, J prime is equal to A, J, L. Okay. So this one uh, interchanges rows and columns. So there is an interesting one. How do we call that? Transpose. Transpose. So this is cool because you know, if we put it in a more explicit matrix form, this one with the prime is going to be the inverse and this one the unprime is going to be the transpose as it's switching these ones so this is the part where in this equation looks it's in conflict with the book uh, it's equation 4.35 okay but all we are saying is that the inverse, if you have a rotation matrix that complies with 
the uh, um, orthonormality condition, then its inverse is its transpose. And this is, uh, this is very important case. I'm going to put a big exclamation point over here. Why is it important? It's for practical purposes. Have you done um, anything with like MATLAB or you know, when you're coding some stuff like matrices, NumPy, or so which operation is cheaper? NumPy. No, but the transpose or the inverse? Oh, the transpose. Like way cheaper, way cheaper. Like this is, you know, ridiculously cheap. What about this one? Yeah, in comparison. I mean, if you only do one, you'll probably not notice it. But if you're doing, you know, a few million, you'll definitely notice it. So this is a very expensive uh, operation. You have to move all the rows. You have to find um, you know, the one that, um, I guess, I don't have it over here. Oh, that makes it the, the inverse. But if that is the case, then we can just move the, um, the rows and the columns, and we get the inverse. So that means that rotation operations are really cheap. So yeah, this is for ortho, orthogonal matrices. Okay, so let's see. Mm, practically, what? Like when two matrices are orthogonal. When two what? Matrices are orthogonal. What's the implication? The matrices are. Like, I mean. When two matrices are orthogonal, what's the practical moment? Um, well, I guess if they're uh, orthogonal, then this is true. So it is true for, this is the orthogonality condition. So it is true for all uh, rotation matrices. Um, it is not going to be true in general for, ma for all matrices. Okay, so uh, we started with you know, this whole ordeal uh, with the cosine, um, the nine cosines, right, when we were rotating. So from that, we got to realize that we only had three cosines, the ones that complied with that, uh, with equation 4.15, uh, that were independent and the other ones were dependent. So it's not very, it's not a very good way of creating these rotation matrices. Uh, in two dimensions, we found uh, a nicer way of doing it. Uh, we were able to um, do it with just uh, phi, where you know, phi had some relationship between the rotating systems. Um, but we can find situations, or I guess there's many cases in which the angles or the combination of sines and cosines in the three by three matrix is going to be um, effective and efficient. But there is one more condition that needs to be um, obeyed. This is one, uh, this is the other one. The third one perhaps it's easier to see with an example.
What is the determinant of a matrix? Yeah. So I guess the cross, the cross product has a negative in there that shouldn't be, but. So if we have um, a matrix that looks like this, then the determinant uh, is expressed or is denoted by the vertical lines, and it is the dot product. So in these two dimensions, what would it be? This one times this one? Minus this one times this one. Muscle memory, huh? Well, I don't know which one you do first. And in three dimensions, What is it in three dimensions? Do you cross it? Yeah. Okay, good. Muscle memory. So it will be A11 and then the determinant of this one. And so on, right? We don't need to write it. But that is the determinant. Uh, so it will be plus. A12 and then this one. Minus. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I think the first one is plus, the second one is minus. Mm. You can write. Check Wikipedia. No, no we can go first. Plus and the first one is plus, the second one is minus. But when you choose the second one, then. I think you're thinking about the cross product. So I just want to be sure. I might be, um, there's like a 80% chance that I'm wrong, but I just want to make sure. Um, so If we have the important property of the determinant is that the determinant of a product of matrices is the um, product of the determinants. Verdict? Plus or minus? Minus. Oh well. Uh, you learn something every day. Okay. Um, so the way we write this uh, is. So that's an important um, theorem. I guess the other it comes from the fact that the determinant actually this one is the corollary to this one. The determinant is non zero. if and only if the matrix is invertible. 
So you shall not divide by zero. Okay, so we have So the cross product is just a determinant? There's something that is different about it. No, no, but just the, the, like the tensor operation, or the, the matrix operation, without the, the magnitudes. Anyways, I guess I know that there's something that is different. I just don't remember what it is. I thought it was the sign. Okay, so if A is equal to B, then this means that um, the determinant is going to be that, right? So you have that. Um, if we put in there the relationship that we just found, so the inverse and the transpose, we get, um, we multiply times A on this side and times A on the other side. So that's equal to what? Identity. Identity. So A and A transpose, which I guess is equal to this one too. What is the, the determinant? Well, it's the determinant of the one of the identity matrix, which is equal to? One. one. So um, we can interchange uh, rows and columns with the, uh, with the inverse and the transpose. So that means that This is another uh, relationship uh, of, I guess, another um, property of the determinant. If you change the rows and columns, the determinant stays the same. So this implies that A times A equals 1 or equals A weekly squared equals one. This is important because it tells you that the determinant could be either plus one or minus one. So I'm going to just write that in text. The determinant of one of these transformation matrices, matrices that follow the orthogonality relationship is either plus one or minus one. So the simplest matrix, transformation matrix, with a determinant of negative one is the matrix simple, or simplest, I guess. Minus one, zero, 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 minus one, zero, 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 minus one. 
this is equal to minus the identity matrix. Um, just to confirm, what is the determinant of this thing? So we will take the negative one and multiply times the determinant of this. So it's this one times this one plus one, and that's it, right? And then these two are zero. So this one is minus one. So indeed, the determinant of this matrix is negative one. So how do you, you know, you, you can combine um, transformations. So you can combine rotations uh, linearly. Can you think of a way to create this with rotation matrices? Pure, pure rotation matrices. Sines and cosines. Well, while you think about it, I'm going to show you how you can do it with one rotation and one reflection. Um, so if you take phi to be 180 degrees, and then you know we had this we had this matrix last time for two dimensions. This one was actually, um, well, it is, it is rotating in two dimensions, but it is about the uh, z-axis, right? So it's doing this. So we, if we uh, put the 180 over here, this is cosine here, right? So minus 1. This one? Zero. This one? Zero. And this one? Yeah. So I'm going to tell you a secret. A reflection is going to look like one, zero, 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 one, zero. 0, 0, minus 1. This is not the identity matrix, it's a reflection matrix. These are all symmetry operations. So if we multiply this one times this one, we get, yeah, right? So zeros over here, zeros over here, uh, negative, negative, negative. So we get the uh, simple matrix. So this was done with a rotation matrix. Is there a way to get here with only rotation matrices? Without a reflection. How will that look like? Zero, 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 zero negative? Negative one? So, this guy over here, I guess this kind of symmetry is called an inversion symmetry. is fairly common. For example, um, some people here know that this is my favorite structure. This is a 
body center cubic. There's an atom in the center. Uh, this atom gives you the inversion symmetry with, um, well, with the appropriate one. But you can rotate by 180 degrees and reflect, and you will get back your PCC structure. So it has inversion symmetry. But there is no way to get inversion symmetry with only rotations. You can think about it for a while. So whenever you have, so you, you can decompose uh, the determinants, right, when you have a multiplication. So you can always, if you have all positives, so let's say you have a proper, if you take the determinant of this one, you're going to get a, a plus one. Uh, all the rotation operations have a determinant of plus one. If for whatever reason you end up with something like this, with the negative one, the whole thing is going to be negative. So that means that you're going to have inversion symmetry, which you cannot achieve by rotating. So the last condition um, for our, our matrices is that well, this one, this one, and determinant is plus one. You cannot have a negative. Um, so if you have a, a positive, that's called a um, proper rotation or um, not rotation, proper transformation. And if you have a negative, it's an improper transformation. So next time, we're going to look at the uh, Euler angles, which comply with those three conditions. I don't need to discuss with the 24 hours